Strength versus strength stamina. Which one's more important? Which one builds bigger muscles? Watch this. Our first caller is Tony from Minnesota. Tony, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I'll just jump in, jump right into my question here. Uh, so m my strength uh, pretty dramatically outweighs my strength stamina. Um, I already knew this for years, but right now running MAPS Powerlift is kind of highlighting it even more. So I was looking at like calculators, uh, like within the program and my one rep max is way off of like my calculated eight rep max. Um, so in short, like my strength is pretty good, but my stamina sucks. And when I train for stamina, I always feel like I'm over training. And so this is from like my own experience, but also from running like anabolic advanced, um, et cetera. So I always feel like I've responded really well. It's like the one to four rep range. And even sometimes going past like eight reps, um, even feels like it feels kind of strange to me or just doesn't feel good, I guess. So my question is like, am I just like genetically prone towards, towards more gains from like a lower rep range? And I'm, and am I overdoing it? Like from doing those higher reps, even though I do see some results when I do it again, I just don't feel good when I do it. Yes. And um, yes. So sure. So, uh, so yeah, just to put a little bit of background on, I've been lifting heavy for like 10 plus years. So since I was like 13, for like football and for rugby, and I always lifted heavy, like due to the demands of my positions, um, and I've always like, I've always lifted this way. This is kind of like my default. Um, and, but I always see tremendous results and I always feel better when I come back to that low rep range. So, yeah. Sound like so you sound. did rugby. So you got good endurance. It's muscle stamina. You're talking yeah. about, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stamina. So like, again, for like anabolic advanced, like pushing to like the 16 plus like 16 ish rep range, even like 12 to 20 within there. Like I usually, this doesn't feel good for me, I guess. Yeah. So th this will help you out a lot. So yes, mm. you may be genetically so prone. Do it enough. Yeah. Well, you also may be genetically prone. You've trained like this for 10 years. Muscle fibers actually start to change a little mm. bit. So, you know, generally speaking, you hear about fast twitch muscle fibers, slow twitch muscle fibers, but there's fast twitch muscle fibers that can actually switch and act more like slow twitch. Uh, and then others that can act more like fast twitch. And then there's genetic, predispositions. I'm like you one rep max calculators. If I base it off of what I did for 10 reps is always oh, way yeah, off. It's way off. Yeah. I can always lift a lot more. So I also have a genetic propensity for that. So that's yes. But here's the other part about high reps. Volume is sets times weight times reps. So to give you an example, let's say you did a bench press and you did a set of 300 pounds for two reps. Okay. So that's a lot of weight for two reps. Then let's say you did a set with 100 pounds for 10 reps. And you think, oh, 100 pounds for 10 reps, that's no problem. You actually did more volume, if you do the math. 10 times 100 is 1,000. 300 times 2 is 600. So higher reps, if you keep all the sets the same and everything else, the, the, the volume tends to be much higher. So what's probably happening is you're probably doing too much. So either lower the weight down and go easier. Or what I do is I lower the volume. I end up doing less sets when my reps are higher and I feel better. Cause I did the exact same thing as you. I'd go to higher reps and I would look at the total sets as the volume and be like, I'm doing the same sets, but my God, I feel like I'm just wasted. And so, uh, I had to lower the volume and uh, match it or get close to what I did before. And I was totally fine. Don't lie. You haven't done over 10 reps <laughs> since 1997. You got to scale yeah. it way down. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, sure. I, again, I can identify with this too. And, and so I don't know, I guess I don't, I don't really lean too much on the genetic propensity towards a lot of that. And when you can, in fact, kind of alter that a bit by the way you train and, and staying in that uh, focused adaptation for an adequate amount of time for your body to actually respond better to that. Um, I know for me personally, it's just like, I'll avoid it. So me going back to it, it sucks and I'll suffer my way through that style of training. Um, but to like fast twitch movements, like, so rugby, you got a lot of fast twitch movements. You got, you're sprinting constantly, so you can sprint for a good amount of time. So you're like, your work capacity is up there. Like you have the, mm -hmm. the ability there. I think it's more just, uh, the amount of time you've, you've placed in that direction in terms of those types of lifts for that many reps. Yeah. That's the, the silver lining here is this, this is where the, this is where the gains are, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the silver lining in this is that it's your it's, opportunity for change. It's hard. You, you suck at it. We all have something like that in our, in our training. There's things that we already gravitate towards, but where the, the, where the most gains lie are the things that you're not good at, or you don't like doing. And so, I mean, my suggestion would be to, to lean into that. 
lean into it, stick with sure. it for a while. Don't bail on it. Like after just doing it a few weeks, yeah. like if you feel overtrained and like, you don't feel good, cut the sets. Yeah. So typically cut what I'll do down. when I bump the reps is uh, instead of doing three sets, I'll do one or two. And then that typically yeah. for me makes up the difference, but Adam's right. This is the gains. If you train like this for like four weeks and you, and you get the right amount of volume, that's going to be the key. You'll build muscle. You'll actually see some serious muscle gains. Then when you go back to your low rep training, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was running anabolic advance, um, I know there's like the optional sets within there, but I was peeling back even from the the not optional stuff too. Um, and I still felt like I was maybe over pushing it a, a couple times. I had to implement. I had to for sure throw those deload weeks in there. Um, but I still saw some pretty good results from it. And then again, switching back to power lift, I like seeing really good results right now. Um, and I just feel better with it. So yeah, it's, it's probably a volume thing. Yep. Um, so, Cam, we, when you, cool. uh, when you talk about feeling overtrained, is it <laughs> in the workout you feel overtrained or is it like afterwards that you feel overtrained? What are your, what are your symptoms? Yeah, it'd be a little bit of both. So sometimes there'd be days I show up to the workout and I'm like just dragging ass <laughs> pretty much. Um, but then sometimes too, like I would notice if that repeated itself, like sleep quality would kind of drop like yeah. daily energy was probably my biggest one. Like I would just feel like lethargic throughout the day. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So then you are, you were doing yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. I would cut the volume sure. even more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Cool. So then, yeah, it sounds like, uh, what you're alluding to, like with the silver lining, then, um, I'm probably leaving a bunch of, a bunch of results on the table if I'm not leaning necessarily too much into, to that higher up range. Yep. For sure. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yep. We'll Seek it out. Yes, for sure. So then my other kind of like side question with that is like, I'm guessing if there's like results being left on the table there, you guys talk about like the granite versus like the bubbly look. Um, I feel like I have more of that granite look. You think I'm going to get some more of that leaning in that direction. You're, you're going to get a lot of hype. You're just going to get a lot of hypertrophy. Yeah. You'll get yeah. more of the bubble. Right. I, 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 yeah. I bet you'll build like, like, if you do this right, you're going to build like, like serious muscle is what's going to happen. For sure. So long as you feed cool. yourself so, right too. Right. Yeah. And that's the big thing that for years I was under eating. And then obviously from like listening to your guys show, I, it took, I had to get over that mental hurdle, but, um, so yeah, for years I was under eating. And then for the last like six months, I've been like in an actual bowl and it's like the first strength gains I've seen in years. And it's been, it's been freaking awesome. awesome. So, Good. How old are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm 23. What, what are your lifts? What's your squat dead and bench? Be yeah. Honest. So right now, so yeah, like my squat max calculated is like, I think it's like 350 or 340, but my what I squatted last week, I hit 385 for two. Whoa! Um, and then my up, my deadlift is I think it's pretty much the same calculated, but my I pulled 425 for two. Wow. So I know those are kind of close. I'm working on my deadlift, and then my bench is like um, I think last week I hit 265 for two. Yeah, so bro, those you're, are, you're those strong, are, dude. Those are great yeah. numbers, bro. Yeah, the best the best anyway. part is you're no, you're you're gonna get a lot stronger. You're so yeah, young. You're so young. Yeah, you got like another ten years of strength gains. To be honest with yeah. you, yeah, uh, doing good. Yeah, though. that's good to hear. Because when I was in high school, I was I was lifting kind of like an ox, and I was I was a lot bigger. I played like lineman, so I was lifting a little bit more weight then. And I've been like this constant battle trying to get back to that. But um, your guys' advice throughout the years has been helping out a ton with that. So. Awesome. Dude, yeah, no, great. awesome, brother. Doing great, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You guys mind if I just add one more, one more little piece? I wanted to no, mention. go for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the obligatory thank you as always, but I wanted to I wanted to throw this in because um, you guys have like literally changed my life. Um, for for background, for a little bit of context, uh, I went to school to to be an engineer. Um, and because although like um, health and fitness, exercise, whatever has has always been my passion, um, I never thought I could like make a living out of doing it. Um, but I kid you not, on my first week. Uh, like on my commute to work at, at my, my the first week of my engineering job, um, I was listening to you guys per usual. And then a, uh, a girl came on her show and she said that she had left her engineering job after like several years and she was never looking back. Um, and even just from listening to it, then I, I knew in my gut that I would end up being me and I just didn't know when. Um, so for the longest time, I considered NCI um, and, and jumping on board with them. And after like long story short, after tons of investment in them, I actually left my job in April. Um, so now I'm a full-time coach and I've literally never been happier. So I just oh, want to cool. say like, I can't thank you yeah. guys enough for like giving me the knowledge, the confidence and the tools just like to do what I do today. Excellent. Um, Amazing. And, like, dude. Yeah. And when people say like most of what they learn is from, from you guys compared to like certifications, like I completely, completely agree with that. <laughs> uh, your guys' content is obviously um, best in the industry and uh, everything stems from you guys. So I'll, I'll, I'll thank or I'll, I'll, I'll pass on my clients. Thanks to you. Cause their results, a lot of their results are coming from you guys too. So 
Awesome. Uh, appreciate it. You guys have literally changed my life. Oh, so. that's great, man. I appreciate you saying yeah, that. Thank, thank you, you so much, brother. 100%. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. I was going to say, oh, crap. You went from making good money to crap money, but it's with <laughs> NCI, so you're going to teach him how to build his business, so I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You know, I was going to say to him, I mean, because I know there is genetic propensities, right? But it's yeah, like, there I are. mean, you could be bad I at know. all rep ranges like Adam, which is so <laughs> I just, I just don't like to lean on that is my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Then you're just super handsome. Yeah, yeah, no, no, give me an, give me an you can't, out have an excuse. excuse. can't have it all. God was like, sex appeal, <laughs> <laughs> tall. Yeah. He only has so much to sprinkle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, not yeah. very good. Not very yeah. good in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it, but yeah. you know. <laughs> no, that was that was a good call. Yeah.